morning, good morning. Welcome all you new folks and welcome back everybody to Loving It on Keto. Today we are going to render tallow or render fat in this case. And so you guys, what I have here is I have two pounds of beef fat. Now tallow comes from beef, lard comes from pork. You can render the fat the same way. Tallow is actually the hard visceral fat and the purest fat that you can get from an animal. In cattle and most animals, it lies around the kidney and it lies around the liver and that solid, hard, visceral fat. And that is the purest form of tallow or lard in this case. That would be what you would use to make soap or beauty pro skin products or um, maybe used for baking and any of those things because it's that pure, 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 snow white, creamy fat. However, you can use all of the fat from the animal. You are gonna get a few pieces of meat along with that because that fat is connected to the muscle tissue of the animal. There are several ways that you can get tallow or lard and one of those is is when you order your meat you can order order larger pieces of meat at a time you can ask them to leave the fat on it and then you can trim the fat off the way you want it slice up the fat that's left bag it and freeze it and save it like you would with bones bone marrow you know bone broth all of those things to make so and to, when you get enough from the freezer you can take that out and render it. You can also go to the butcher and tell them you would like to purchase the tallow fat, which is the visceral fat around the liver and the kidneys. Now, if you want grass fed, grass raised, grass finished, you need to put your name in first because that tallow goes very quickly in the carnivore world. And if you're lucky enough to purchase a uh, part of a cow, you know, you can make that your stipulation that you want that tallow or you want some of that fat so that you can make your tallow with it and get that from whoever is butchering, slaughtering and butchering your, um, your beef that you're getting it from and the same with pig. But for today, we went to two bashes. I asked the butcher there who was slicing meat if I could have about two pounds of the beef fat for tallow. And so I purchased two pounds for $2.58 from him. Now there are several ways to actually render your fat. So I'm going to explain some easy ways. If you have a crock pot, a slow cooker, an instant pot that you can turn into a slow cooker, a pressure cooker that you can turn into a slow cooker, you can do what I'm going to do, put it in that particular item and put it on low and render your fat that way. Today we are rendering our fat in the oven. I have, uh, this is a uh, Wolfgang Puck stainless steel pans with stainless steel handled lid tempered glass. This pan is actually a pasta or vegetable pan. It's got two parts to it so that you can lift up and drain away um, pasta and vegetables. You can steam in here but what we are going to do today is we're going to blind this with our fat and when we pull it out it's going to pull out the cracklings or the pieces with meat on them that did not render. And we're gonna put that aside and then we're gonna see if we need to put this through an additional strainer or not in order to get it the pureness that we want today. So, I got this all ready to go. We are going to put this when we are done in a 225 degree to 250 degree oven and let it render for several hours. I think with my oven, 
I'd like to put it on 235 right in the middle somewhere. That's a happy medium. Tempered glass lids usually are good to 380 degrees, but check your pans. Check if you have stainless steel pans. Make sure there's no plastic parts on here. Make sure it's a tempered glass lid and that it is oven safe. You can also use a Dutch oven. A ceramic Dutch oven with a lid would work really well as well. So let's get started. First, you wanna take your meat fat that we've got or your tallow fat that's that visceral hard beautiful white fat and just chop it into smaller chunks and what you should do if you are um, cutting your own meat getting a big piece of meat that's usually less expensive like at Costco or Sam's Club and trimming it yourself you can just cut your pieces up into about one inch chunks bag it and then when you feel you have enough to render it, then do it that way. That's what we do with our bones. We, we have a bag of bones in the refrigerator, I mean in the freezer. And when we have enough, we make bone broth. Same thing with the fat. And that way, you know, if you're buying from a butcher, just tell him to leave all your fat on your meat and then you trim it your way. And then you can put the fat into the bag and freeze it. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to cut up all of my fat. And if you have the tallow, you would do the same thing. Um, don't be afraid. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just cutting it up smaller so it takes less time to render. Now this one has a little bit of beef meat on it, but I'm going to leave it because I also want some cracklings. That's not going to hurt a thing. If I had a big piece, or if I wanted to, you know, I could trim this totally out. I don't have a very sharp knife, actually. But you could take your meat and trim it, trim your fat as good as you want to in order to get the best fat for you. And let me tell you, cracklins are absolutely delicious. And you do this the same way with lard as you do for tallow. Remember, lard is from a pig and tallow is from beef. And the best fat is the visceral fat that's around the kidneys and the liver. It's the purest, it doesn't, it's not attached too much to any muscles, so you're not gonna get the muscle meat in that. That's why it's pure, pure fat. So let's take this away. We're not going to have very money. He did a good job of getting rid of most of the meat when he did that for us. And we need to invest in either a knife sharpener or some nice sharp knives. A fillet with a fillet knife for fishing. If you guys are fishermen, that'd be great to use because you do come across some of the tougher stuff. But for the most part, fat isn't tough. I'm just going to start putting this into my pot as I go. Just putting it into my pot. And just keep going until you have a pot full. And you can fill this all the way up to the top if you want to. You know, I think two pounds is enough for what I'm going to be showing you guys today. And basically, cracklins is the leftover. It's the leftover pork that doesn't rent, or the beef that doesn't render, that has little bits of meat attached to it. And let me tell you, you salt and pepper that, those things, and they hurt. If you like pork belly, if you like bacon, you're going to love the cracklins. Let me tell you, they're delicious. Huh, Harry? Oh, yeah. And go and ask your butcher. Put your, put your order in ahead of time. Say, hey, look, can you get your hands on some tallow for me? You know, and if not, if he says no, you know, they already get it. Usually they buy half a beef. You know, and they've got that beef hanging in cold storage somewhere. Um, and uh, if you can get a hold of the, the good stuff, the tallow that's the visceral fat from around the kidneys and the liver, you know, that's the best. But this works just as good. There's a debate on, you know, the different properties of the outside fat versus inside fat. But it tastes delicious. It works and it's beautiful for frying. Man, you want to fry chicken? Oh yeah. Leave the skin on and fry it in tallow. It's absolutely delicious. Add a little tallow 
for cooking purposes. Some of you uh, do not eat pork, so this is a great way to get that additional fat from beef as opposed to getting it from lard or pork. If I had a sharp fillet knife, I could get right through this, but Harry won't let me get around sharp knives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. I said, you know, we need to get a really sharp fillet mm -hmm. knife. And he's like, oh, not for you, we don't. So, anyway, he's just teasing me, you guys. But it would go easier if I had a nice sharp knife. Just keep doing it till you get your fat all done. And that way, if you do this in a crock pot or uh, even in a pan, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. No more than at most a cup if your whole pan is full. Because the water, remember oil floats to the top the water stays on the bottom and keeps the fat away from the bottom so that it doesn't turn it brown and doesn't cook it brown. So you get that pretty, beautiful, creamy whiteness to your tallow. The Native Americans or indigenous people that are hunters with the game meat, the deer, the bison, the moose, the elk, they really, really need the additional tallow that's around the vital organs, which is very, very, very lean. The muscle meat is, has, is almost non-existent as far as fat is concerned. So they need to get the fat, the tallow part as well, because they could get the wasting disease. So fat was super duper important. And the fat that's on the muscle meat is a little bit more um, tough because it has the muscle, uh, the, the lining and the um, tough connective tissue left on it where the tallow is the visceral, it's just lied and packed against the kidney and the liver. Of course, you eat the kidney and the liver because it's a wonderful nutritious food source as well of the animal, so that was very, very important. Heart, kidney, liver, any tallow, any fat that was around the organ meats was extremely important to the indigenous people. And it is for us too. So often um, hunters take the muscle meat and leave, you know, the tongue, the brains, and those things, and they don't take the vital organs with them. They don't take the heart, the liver, the kidneys, and they don't take the additional fat because when they take it home, they're cooking it in their home where they have readily available fats, you know, for their meat. Anyway, that is what we have. I'm gonna take off my gloves. And what we're going to do now is I'm gonna have Harry come around. We're gonna stop the camera and Harry's gonna come around and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, you guys, I have my oven. I've got the rack lowered so that I have plenty of room for my pan plus the lid that I can safely get that in and out of the oven without knocking it. I've got about three quarters of a cup of boiled water that I boiled. You can use um, purified water. You can use whatever kind of water that you use to cook with. And I'm just putting some in because I want just a little bit of water at the bottom. It will disintegrate and it, not a disintegrate, it'll evaporate. See it in the bottom? Yep. By putting the water on the bottom, water and oil don't mix unless you shake it or blend it really, really well. Yeah. So as the fat renders, it's gonna drip down and sit on top of that water and not burn and not turn uh, black or anything because we're gonna put the oven 
Now I'm going to put this in, put the lid on. I'm going to put it in my oven. I'm going to make sure I can get in and out of that oven. I've got enough clearance for everything to get it out without whacking the lid or burning myself. I'm going to close the oven. I put the pan in a cold oven, have the oven temperature set to 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and it will come up to temp, and then we will cook it for 90 minutes. You can cook it anywhere between 225 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Because I'm doing less fat, it will render sooner, so I want to check it in 90 minutes. If you start smelling something burning, you want to come sooner. Yeah. If you have this in a slow cooker, you want to stir it. Once the fat starts rendering, you can actually take a ladle, you can take a canning jar or a container um, that has a sieve in it. If you don't have a container with a sieve, like let's say we're gonna use this. This container doesn't have a sieve. I can put a smaller sieve inside of it. and pour the fat through this to catch even more particles. If you have a canning um, yeah, funnel, funnel yeah. you can put the sieve in that as well. And I'm gonna look for one of my funnels and see if I can um, rig it to be able to get this in safely into this container and filter it. If you have cheesecloth, you can put cheesecloth even on top of this fine filter and filter it to the best, best, best quality of tallow. And you guys, once you have it, if you don't use a lot of tallow, you can refrigerate it for like five, six months. You can also freeze it once you have it for about a year. Um, it's gonna start not going bad, but the taste will start tasting less and less if you freeze it for any longer length of time. But putting it in the refrigerator keeps it perfect, keeps it safe. So make sure if you use jars, you use the proper canning jars. You warm those jars up in some warm water and wipe the jars while they're warm to put that in. Even though it's tempered glass, you don't want to make it too hot and you wanna pour it in slowly so you don't break the glass. Anyway, you guys, we'll come back in 90 minutes and check to see how much has rendered from our tallow. What to do with this meat, you ask? If you have dogs or cats and dogs and cats like we have for Sally, she would love this meat. The butcher did this fresh. We got it yesterday within 15 minutes after it came off the beef that he was cutting for the meat, mark for the meat to go out onto the shelves. So I feel this is really good meat for me to be able to cook for Sally. So I got a uh, nonstick pan because she does not need extra fat. There's a dinky winky bit of fat on the muscle meat right there that's going to render down. And I'm just going to cook that for Sally. I'm not going to put any um, herbs or spices on it. And she's going to have some beef for dinner. This looks good enough for me to eat. Sally's going to be a happy camper. Oh, wow, that's good, right? Yeah. Cute. And she'll be able to have this tonight. We'll cut it with the scissors into small pieces for her. If you had cats, I'm sure they would appreciate it. If you feed your animals raw meat, I think this is safer than um, a ground hamburger. I think there's less contamination to it. Myself, that's just how I feel. And uh, definitely feed this to your little animals. Harry was saying, uh, put some salt and pepper on that. I'll eat it. <laughs> I'm using this piece to scrape all the good brown and good stuff out of the pan. Oops, see? Took all that um, delicious meat drippings that were sealing in the pan out so that it makes this pan easy to clean up and Sally gets the benefit. So you guys, I took the meat for Sally or for your cats or dogs and let me tell you, 
This is really nice and tender. I'm just cutting them into little pieces so we can add these to her dog food, give her a little treat. Speaking of which, she heard her word, her name, so I'm gonna give her a piece here. Look, there's Sally, come on over here. Okay, sit down, would you like some beef? Yeah, oh yeah, that's delicious. Oh yeah, huh? And this is nice. That's good stuff, huh, Sally? Ooh, she's coming for more, here she comes. She's coming for more. <laughs> Okay, you guys, it's been about 40 minutes. I'm gonna have Harry bring it out just so we can share with you the, di the varying of how it's working. So, there it is. Bring the lid up. So it's starting to render. Yep. Meat's changing colors. So we're gonna go ahead and cover the lid again. Can you lift that? bottom layer up just let me get the camera underneath it just no the top just pull the top up oops careful no, no, I'm no, gonna no, bring no. it out yes, to do that yes. <sighs> just to look just lift it straight up so it's just starting to render okay put it back in there you go so it's just starting to render after 40 it, minutes after 40 minutes because we're going to need to render this for at least two to four hours you guys yeah but we just want to share with you how long it takes to render you know slow and steady wins the race because you're not you don't want it to brown you just want the fat to release and change to liquid so there you have it at 40 minutes be able to check again in 50 more minutes while we're waiting for the tallow, Harry and I got hungry and I have two containers of the chicken breasts because I cooked both family packs of chicken. So we're each going to have one and I think we're just going to nuke it and get it warm. Don't you want yours warm? Yeah. I want mine a little warm. I want mine a little warm too. These are, these are pretty hefty. They've got the ribs in. Ooh. Got this big old fat one. Sure. Good. So I'm going to heat that in the microwave and then I think we're going to have a little bit of sauce. I have that and then I also have this. It's full of chicken breast too. Yeah. So we've got chicken for a couple of days. That's good. So do we want to put some yes. harasha mayo? Yes. Paula brought this to us. When we, when we met them at uh, Fogo de Chow, and this is really good, you guys. It's really good. It's harasha mayo, and it's avocado. It's chosen foods, and it's very clean ingredients. Very clean ingredients. Or we can have horseradish mustard, too. So I'm going to get the horseradish mustard out. Then we can have a little bit of dipping sauce. I, this is going to have to go two minutes because that's a big hunk, two hunks of chicken. Where is our mustard? Did we use it all? No. Oh, no, here it is. It's behind all the stuff. So this is horseradish mustard. Mustard's on the menu more than the harasha sauce, but I just want a little bit of the harasha sauce. If that's how you pronounce it, har harasha, harasa. Parasa. Anyway, you guys, that's what we're going to do. Put a little bit on this plate. To dip our chicken in. Because you know Harry loves mustard. Oh, yeah. So we'll put a little bit. my mustard. Put a little bit of both on. Yep. And that gives something for him. And then I'll have the other plate with chicken. And, of course... Smoked cherry salt from Gotta Redmond's. have it. Gotta have it. Yes, indeed. I put it in here and it's wonderful. Mm, smells delicious. And it's great on chicken, turkey, and eggs. Yes, indeed. Ooh, yeah. It smells delicious. Mm mm mm. Delicious. The big, the big one over for you. I'll put some sauce and mustard on this one for me. Put this in the fridge. 
damage. Put some, come over here and we'll put some sauce on, salt on here. I like salting the plate because then as we cut through, you can dip it onto the plate, right, Harry? Yep. I know that sounds weird, but it works. Instead of having to take it in and try to salt it, salt all around the plate and everything. There you go. Chicken, it's what's for breakfast. Yes, indeed. Harry, can you pull up the pan and put it on the top of the stove and let's take a peek, see what's, how it's been doing? Uh, it's got a ways to go yet, but... So I'm going to turn the heat up to 250, which is the highest it should go. And let me have this. Oh, I'll do it. No, I'll put it in. I'm fine. I just want to stir it and see how it's doing. And then Harry's going to put it back in. I took out the middle piece, you guys, because I just didn't feel like it was when it was needed, and I just wanted it in the pan. So Harry's going to put it back in. You got it. Yep. And we'll let it go for some more. So Harry's going to put it back in, and we've got it up to 250, which is as high as I want to render it at. And we'll come back in a little bit. Harry, can you pull it out so we can take a look to see how much it's rendered down? Oh yeah, we've got some fat in there now. I'm going to take it out. Um, I'm going to stir it. Okay, let me bring it up. Close the refrigerator, I mean the oven. You'll see, it's rendering down. Got some fat in there. So it's rendering down, you guys. We're just gonna let it go some more. Check it every hour. Hi, oh, Harry. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, back into the oven it goes for a little longer. Okay, Harry, take out and right put there, it. Right? Yep, put it right there. right there. Yes, sir. Be careful because it's hot. Ooh. Turn off the stove, please. Push clear. Yep. And I'll trade you places. Okay, so you can come and show everybody that this has been rendered down. And there's still some fat in there. Okay, you guys, I'm going to take out the rest of this and I'm going to put it in this frying pan because I want to make cracklings and get the rest of the, the tallow out. So I'm just going to take all this out. I personally, I've never done this before. Usually I've done it in an air fryer. I have done it on the stove top. Did we ever do it in the, um, I think we did it in a slow cooker once yeah, too. We did. We did. Yeah, we did. So we usually make it out of Yeah, and my, my crock pot, my slow cooker cracked, so I don't have one anymore. But um, any of the ways work. I just don't have any more time today to dedicate to the um, oven way. So if you see, I'm using a slotted spoon. I'm still going to get fat from this, but I'm going to, I'm going to, but you notice in the pan, What you're doing, doing the dog. Mm -hmm. And you guys will come back when I'm ready to put this fat into the container. Okay, okay Harry, can you pour that in the container? We've yeah. got a fine strainer and a container and just pour it really slow.
Okay, you can put that back on the stove. Let me turn this down because I want to render the rest of this fat and I want cracklings. You can render fat on top of the stove too. Just want to make sure you don't get it too hot. It's got to mix it a lot. Yes, you do. You have to stir it. So let's take a look at this. Ooh, oh, nice. See. Remember, we only yeah. have two things of fat. Yep. So I'm going to put this just right here. Okay. Because we're going to be rendering the rest of that. Yep. So I'm going to take and just sit here and play with this. Make sure this gets rendered down nicely. And get some cracklings out of the deal, you guys. Oh my gosh. Huh, Harry? Yep. Slow is the key to getting the tallow this pretty golden color that we have in the container. It's going to be a creamy white when we're done over here. So that you can share. Look at that. How clean and clear that is. Can you see? That is beautiful tallow, isn't it, Harry? Oh, yeah. That's going to be nice. But, you know, we just did a small amount, so... Yeah, and we still have some more to go that can come off of yeah. this. By the time she gets through with this over here, we'll have some cracklings yeah, we'll and we'll have a little bit more. You do it slow to get the clear, clear tallow. And I really like the slow cooker method or the um, Instapot on low, slow cook method because that you can leave for for eight hours you can even turn it off at night leave the lid on it will still render on low and then come up and finish you can drain off all that tallow and then start it again as you as it goes you can drain off the tallow with a ladle and that works really good too you guys but man that smells good doesn't this smell yeah, good it smells great mm -mm -mm. that's why sally's right here she smells she is too she, she smells right it here. It's like going, okay, what, what's up now? Yep, she smells it. Now, if you had pure uh, visceral fat from around the organs with no meat in it whatsoever, you could chop it up into really small pieces and render it a lot quicker than we did. But because of the meat that's in this, mixed in with it, and you can see it in here, we want to actually cook that meat until it's crisp and crackly and salted and it's better than pork rinds. At least I think so, don't you, Harry? Uh-huh. I mean, it's it's delicious. So we'll come back. I think the best way to, I think the best way to make those in the air fryer. Was in the air fryer when we did it? Well, the cracklings, yeah. I mean, yeah. I could put some of this in there. I don't know. That really looks good. And salted. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, Redmond's real salt with the yep. smoked salt on that. Oh, yeah, that'll be delicious. Uh, so we'll come back. Okay, you guys, we'll come back when we have more rendered tallow here for you. Some more beef fat. Yes, indeed. Okay, you guys, we just poured more from here into here. So it's almost full. And you want to make sure you cover because as you turn it up to make your cracklings, it starts popping, just like bacon does. You want to make sure that you have your cover on so that you don't cause an accident and you don't get burned, huh, Harry? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to turn this off because we've got more fat. We're trying to render it down now. We're getting to the bottom. I don't want to overcook it because I'm still rendering the fat out. This will probably be the last yeah, pour put in there. because that'll be the end of what we have uh, for this container and that container will be full. So I want to let this just cool off enough so that it's safe to take off and drain. Yeah, and then we'll come back stop for popping. the yep, then we'll come back for the final cracklings, you guys. Okay, you guys, the cracklings are done, and I'm very excited about that. 
So I'm gonna I let it cool down enough so that it's not popping anymore. You know how bacon pops. I've got a plate with paper towels, just like I would for bacon. I've got my little ladle right here. And I'm gonna put my cracklins on here. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a lot of meat pieces on here. Oh yeah, mm 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 mm. Set this apart and get it wide open spaces on there. This is going to be delicious. And there's still some tallow that rendered off of this part as well. Sorry, that's the lid, Harry. I didn't mean to make it do that. Oh, you got a lot of them. I got a lot of them. And it didn't look like, it looked like I got all the, the meat out, didn't it? Yeah. Well, that just goes to show you that there's a lot of hidden meat in the beef fat when you're getting it from the muscle part of the meat. So this is ready for Harry, but before we go with the cracklin, I'm taking some Chef's Blend. You doing what? I'm taking Chef's Blend, real salt, <clears throat> and I'm salting my cracklins while they're hot and delicious and have a little bit, just a little bit of grease on them, you know, to get that, Cold to, let the, to let the uh, salt stick, right? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yep. Man, does that look delicious. I have a little piece over here. I'm going to have to get some. Mmm. Oh. Is it good? Oh yeah. Mmm. Chewy. Delicious. Now you can let them go longer, but that's the consistency we like ours. It's like bacon. Yeah. Mm. Only it's beef. Okay, Harry. Your turn to pour the rest of this in okay. here. We have to watch it carefully because you could get too much in there. Because it look where it's at. We're almost to the rim. Yep. I know, I'm gonna have to be so careful. you're gonna have to be careful. Yeah, that's gonna be too much for this container. Yeah, I think so. We've got too much rendered. I was hoping. I, I thought we'd have just about the right amount, but. Oops, nope. That's I about as much as I can go. That's about as much as we can go because, yep. Okay. I'm gonna set we'll this put back. the rest. Yep, we'll put the rest in that other um, container. Yep. Look at that, you guys. Got a paper towel nearby. Here, I, mean, I get it. I get it. Never mind. I just set it there. We've got a full thing of beautiful rendered tallow. It's going to turn like a beautiful white color. It will. It's going to take a while to get there, but yeah. oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? Be careful because that pan's hot, Harry. But you guys. So I've showed you and talked to you about several ways. One is a slow crock pot. You can put it on and let it go for eight hours. The other way is in a 225 to 250 degree oven. The other way is on the stove top. When you do the stove top, you really have to wash it. It pops. You want to make sure it's on a low enough heat and you have a lid for it because that's dangerous. All of it's dangerous, but it's more protective. You can do it in an Instapot or a pressure cooker on the slow cook. So there are several different ways, depending on what kind of um, container or oven or crock pot or Instapot you have in order to render down your tallow or your lard, because you do lard the exact same way, only lard is from pork and the tallow is from beef. You can do any of the fats that way, you guys. Well, tallow is basically what's around the organs, right? Yes. Tallow. We just, we just started real to call everything tallow. Right, we have. And Harry's right. We've kind of made tallow generic uh, in the beef fat world. And the actual real good tallow is the purest, is the visceral fat that's around the liver and the kidneys of the cattle, of the beef. So 
And of the pig, it would be the lard the same way. That's the purest. So the way we did it gives you lots of cracklings. If you look over here, you've got all these delicious pieces to eat. That's a piece of beef that we didn't even see because that fat that we rendered was part of the muscle fat where the muscle of the meat is. So I'm gonna have a taste test. Mmm, crunchy good. Mm -mm -mm. If you like pork belly fried up, you're gonna love beef tallow cracklings. Anyway, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and close out the day. Tomorrow is a 16 hour fast or eight hour eating window. It's a BBBA day and you can add one keto chow and move your body. Hey, you guys, I hope you find this informative. If you have any questions on how to do tallow, please go ahead and leave a comment below. There's lots of people that have made it before. I can answer you, you know, some of the other, um, Viewers can help you too with that, um, but you guys, it's super easy, and this is going to last for months in oh, yeah. this container. Matter of fact, this container is probably going to go in the refrigerator because we're not going to go through this. And if you put it in the refrigerator, it'll last about six months. Right. If you put it in a container and put it in the freezer, it can last a year. So it can last months on your countertop because this is so pure, there's no fiber there's no meat it's the meat particles that can make it turn rancid so you want to make sure you are using a very fine screen i would suggest that you use a fine cloth screen or cheesecloth yeah to do that with so um it stays as long of a shelf life as you need it to be anyway you guys please remember to like subscribe ring the little bell give us a thumbs up and we'll see you right here tomorrow sally saying good night yeah archa yes okay i made you beef earlier and it's much healthier for you than cracklings yes yeah, you don't want the cracklings you, you want this delicious beef mama made you look at this beef oh yeah look at that piece yeah 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 okay Mark, that's it.